Hello, everybody. Welcome back to You've Been Josh with Josh. I am your host, Josh. Episode 40. Isn't that crazy? 40 freaking episodes. That's 40 weeks of episodes that we've put out since September of last year. And uh, we've had a couple weeks off because of uh, um, life things that have happened. Um, however, um, I'm, I'm just want to take a moment and say how thankful I am for everyone who's been listening so avidly um, on any platform that you are listening on um, and all of the, the praise and um, the kind words that you've sent my way about the podcast. Um, it's always really nice to hear some feedback on it and how you guys feel about it. Um, and I, I love doing it. It's a lot of fun. And 40 episodes is fucking nuts to me. It's a, it's a big achievement. Um, and in 10 episodes, when we hit 50, I'll feel the same way. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, just want to take a moment to say thanks. Thanks for 40 freaking episodes, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much. Today's episode is not sponsored by the Association for Renaissance Martial Arts, um, an association that, um, teaches you martial arts from the Renaissance. Now, it's not the martial arts we know, like a uh, karate kid. No, no, no. This is swordplay. This is history, heritage, camaraderie, and self-defense. The real world skills from the real world history. I'm talking about sword play. Not fencing, but knighted armored sword play. Yes, the Association for Renaissance Martial Arts was so kind to not sponsor today's episode um, with their uh, memberships and seminars that they hold um, and their 2019 uh, seminar for the youth in Atlanta that seems to have never happened since they still have signed up uh, TB, TBA uh, announcements for it. Um, but after this podcast, I do hope to get my a membership of my own um, and hopefully become a Renaissance martial arts master. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well. Thank you. Thank you again for coming back and listening. No matter where you are, uh, uh, wherever you are in the world, you came and you, you lent me your earlobes and you came to listen to little old me and a friend talk about some random shit, Twitch video games, life stuff, whatever it may be. And I appreciate you. Um, I also know a lot of people are binging a lot of the old episodes and catching up to where we are now. So if you're listening in the future from when this episode was put out, um, hi, hope I'm doing well. Hope future me is treating you, uh, well, and, uh, you are, are the, the future's bright. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, guys, things have been going crazy in, in my life as of late. We're, uh, we're in the process of moving. We've been looking to move for a really, really, really long time. Um, I'll update more on that topic once, um, my personalized episode will come out next week. However, I, uh, just wanted to say that we did seem to have found an apartment, uh, which is very exciting. Um, but we are in the process of figuring out the logistics of it and the dates that we can move in and all that jazz. So it's a little stressful right now. I don't know how it's going to affect the podcast. Hopefully not at all, but just wanted to throw that out there in case I do have an announcement in the discord that, um, uh, next week's episode is postponed because of moving, uh, quickly, um, if they need us to move in, but, um, I will fill you in when that time comes. However, today, today we have, uh, Andro, Andro, Androsity One with us as our guest. And I am very, very, very excited to have them on. Um, so without further ado, Andro, so good to have you on. Hello. How are you? Josh, it's so good to be here. Oh my How god, are you? I'm doing well, <laughs> dude. I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for for joining me. I I was really excited to have you on. Uh, I got a lot of things that I want to talk to you about, and I think that you have some things that we can talk about. And we're just gonna yeah. we're gonna jive. We're gonna dance, baby. Yeah, no, for sure. It was like when you when you reached out to me to uh, be on here, like it made my day. I was so excited. Oh, I was dude, like, hell yeah, I want to be there, yeah. dude. That's so nice. So, yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I, I know that you've listened to some of the old episodes, so you know how some of this goes. Obviously, I've changed some things, so it'll keep you on your toes. But there's a there's an uh, getting to know you section at the beginning. Um, I'm going to get to uh, shoot some fire questions out. You got to just answer again. No, no wrong answers. So don't worry about saying anything. Um, you know, just just have fun with it. Kick your feet up. Yeah. Just chill. All right. Um, are you ready for these questions? I am not ready let's do it all right all right favorite color purple favorite food uh thai curry Ooh, favorite drink coffee favorite fruit 
Strawberries. And then apples. Oh, okay. Favorite season. <laughs> Autumn. <laughs> Autumn, okay. Favorite childhood yeah. game. Uh, everywhere Road Trip. Oh, okay. Uh, favorite current game. Uh, probably a toss-up between Rocket League and RimWorld. All right. Favorite movie or TV show? Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Nice. Favorite genre of music? Alternative. All right. Favorite book? Uh, A to Z Mysteries. All right. Favorite word? Kerfuffle. Favorite number? Seven. All right. Favorite animal? Uh, uh, dolphins. Nice. Hogwarts house? Probably Slytherin. All right. Well, you've never taken it? I, I've... I've... I wasn't allowed to watch Harry Potter, and by the time that I was in, or by the time I like was eighteen, I wasn't yeah. interested. So yeah. fair, fair, fair. Okay, blanket. Or, were you a blanket or stuffed animal kid? Blanket. All right, soft I taco know. or soft or uh, soft shell, like soft taco or hard shell. Sorry. Uh, soft taco. I can eat nachos if I want. Hell yes, that's a good answer. Do you Thank eat you. your Oreos whole or pull them apart? Whole. All right. Toilet paper over or under. Um. So our toilet paper dispenser is not big enough to hold a roll of toilet paper. So Fair. we just keep it on the shelf in front of the toilet. Like so you upright. put your finger in it and like pull, do it yourself. Yep. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, <laughs> what kind of bender would you be? Earth, fire, water, or air? Water. Mm, nice. Yes. All right. Well done. Well done. I have to say um, your, your childhood game. What, what is that? I've never heard of it. <laughs> All right, all right. It is um, an RPG okay. where you are a car. Um, and so you start, you, like, the whole objective is to race through the entire game. Like, there's so many Grand Prix that you have to go through, and you spend the entire game upgrading your car with different parts, whether it's, like, engines, tires, so on and so forth. It's ridiculous. And I don't know. It just took up a lot of my time. And there is actually a game hmm. mode in it where you played soccer as the car, and that's led to my love for Rocket League. Interesting. Like, ultimately. Yeah. So, it kind of, to be honest, it kind of sounds like the original Cars game from, like, the PS2. I don't know if you played the, like, Cars, like, the Disney Cars game, but you're I'm a car. Sure I did, yeah. Yeah, you're a car, and you're just in Radiator Springs, and the entire map just has races that somehow help the people around the town. And so you just go around and do races to help people, and like it was open world, so you could literally just go around, and there was like collectibles that you could find on top of yeah. like the the canyons and stuff. So that it's it was like a really fun game for me when I was younger. So it's, it's interesting similar. that you say that. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. I'll have to look that up. I'll have to look that up. And I then might um, try and find it and like play it on stream because it's it's a game. <laughs> honestly, well, okay. So I don't know if you, if I've I probably talked to you about this before, but one of my favorite childhood games was um, Disney's Extreme Skateboard Skateboard Adventure. Um, okay. And it was there was a period of time when Disney had like this competition where they're like, we're going to make we're going to make a skateboarding game and it's going to be for kids. And so we want kids to be the characters. And we want to know what the kids think about the game. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold a skate <laughs> skateboard competition for the kids. And then we're going to <laughs> and then we're going to have whoever wins the competition be the um be oh. some of the characters. <laughs> yeah, 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 I think I've heard about this. Yeah, but all of the songs from that game were like Smash Mouth, uh, like um, <laughs> Little Romeo, like just so many like 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 really popular like music artists that were like yeah. punk rock from that time, and like it was like early two thousands. Um, so the the whole soundtrack is fire, like it's so good. But like if you try to play it on Twitch now, it's totally DMC. Oh yeah, like, you're the entire thing. Taken down. There's no shot. Yeah, I actually <laughs> looked up some people who were playing it, and their entire vods were muted. And I was like, bro, oh, I was like, holy damn. shit! Like just just turn off the in game music. Actually, they might not be able to. I just thought about it because it, yeah, like, with with it being that old, there might not even be that. Yeah, setting, but like worry, then. you could literally play as like Buzz Lightyear, Woody, um, Tarzan, Simba. Uh, oh, that's that's Pumbaa, awesome. like all the, like the characters and go on like Disney maps and they would do fucking, you could shred the gnar. <laughs> you could fucking shred the, it's so funny. And like, you know how in Tarzan they have like the trash the camp song? Yeah. yeah and yeah. they have that whole beautiful number. They have right. a section where you have to do tricks on the table to break dishes as like you're trying. It's so stupid, but so good. 
Um, and it was like the only like skateboard game I played, but you could customize your own characters. You could make your own. And there was like other maps and you could just like zoom around Andy's bedrooms on the hot wheel tracks and like shred. And it was so much fun. Um, oh my God. But dude, that's so funny. I'm um, going to, to look into this. <laughs> no, I a hundred percent. I think it's, I think there's an emulator for it or something like that. And I really want to play somewhere. it. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, you said your favorite number was seven. Can you explain? Yeah. Uh, it's a cool number. Interesting. Did you know that my favorite number is seven? I did not. Yeah, my favorite number is seven. Do you know the story behind why? No. Okay, so I have an emote on my channel that's a die that has a seven on it. And okay. it's because when I was younger, my dad and I, I was a, I was a very like... I was a very interesting kid growing up and uh i was just like a nuisance to my parents for the sake of like i just wanted to spend time with them all the fucking time and i was just like i had this giant foam die that my mom had for like a, a summer camp or something and i was like dad let's let's see who who can get the most guesses of the numbers you know and so he would throw it up and he would say like two and if it landed on two we're like oh shit you know like nothing would happen but we were just like oh right. wow you got it and i would throw it up and he would throw it up and then we were just going back and forth seeing if we could land on it and I threw it up and I was like, seven. <laughs> and it's a six sided die. So what the fuck is right. it going to do? You know? And so he just fucking laughed hysterically. And so whenever I do something now, that's like dumb. My dad will just be like seven, you know, like that's, as like, is like a, yeah. a shot at me. This is and the so, same. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so now uh, for my, my Twitch channel, I just use it as like F's in chat. Like if they're like, oh wow, seven, oh. Josh, good for you. Like, mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> yeah. Like I've, I've always seen the, uh, the die. On, on your channel i just mm. didn't know why a six sider had a seven and <laughs> yeah. so to hear that story it's like your dad and now your chat is just like good job good yeah job. well and that's the thing i thought it was funny when we first started and just kind of became a thing but now it's like because we have so many new people like it's hard to tell the whole story over again unless someone asks so people i think they just assume it's another emote you know <laughs> right. um so yeah. I think I, I need to make like a command or something of like what it means. I don't know. I have to figure that out. But um, yeah, I just thought this was kind of funny. Yeah, you were like seven. I was like, inside oh. joke though. You know? Oh no, just not like, at all. Fuck, yeah. I love inside jokes. So great. It's it, and it's also such a better reason. Like I think honestly, when I was growing up, uh, one of my favorite uh, like baseball players was number seven. And mm. so when I was playing little league, my number was always seven. Mm. Um, I don't know, but. It just yeah. kind of stuck. It just kind of it's just there, and it's like okay. yeah, number seven, lucky seven, lucky number seven. Um, yep. you said uh, your favorite TV show slash movie was uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. That's a great yes. fucking show, dude. It's I love so that. Good. You like I, Andy Samberg? I do. I do. I don't watch like a lot of his stuff, but like Brooklyn Nine Nine just really grabbed me, and yeah. uh, I don't know. There's just something about it. Um, growing up, I mean, my my entire family. I say my entire family, uh, my dad, uncle and grandfather were all police officers. And oh, so, shit. yeah. So like growing up in that kind of environment, um, and then having a show that takes it and it still like respects it as a very real thing, but mm -hmm. also makes it really lighthearted is just, yeah. it, it, it grabbed me and I love it. I showed it to my dad. He loves it. <laughs> um, so that's, that's something we can like, we can talk about and I, I watch it like almost as religiously as people who watch the office watch the office wow right like it's something i can always go back to and just play it yeah from season one and just run through all what eight seasons and then repeat <laughs> it's one so, of those things i think everybody has a comfort show you know yeah everybody does i think mine honestly would probably be parks and rec or mm -hmm. um or The Office, to be honest. I think both of those are like my two that I will go back to. No, sorry. Parks and Rec or Community. Community is like my go-to. Yeah, I, I need to watch through Community. I've watched it the first season, and then I just never uh, never followed up on it. But. Yeah, it's good. I really like it. Okay, so, Andrew. Um, yes. I have some other questions for you that I'd like to go over, if you don't mind. Um, remember, these are... Uh, you can take your time with these if you like, or... Uh, you can you can come up with something weird. Doesn't matter. These are just these are just questions. You know, they're all not right. they're not serious at all. Um, okay. <laughs> so are you are you ready? I don't know. The 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 way you started laughing at the end makes me a little <laughs> worried. <laughs> don't worry. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> can you rock some jorts? No. Oh, big sad. Uh, do you think Bigfoot is out there somewhere? 
Oh, absolutely. He's somewhere out there. Oh, we yeah, somewhere. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it's yeah. Wednesday. In 2085, the sky has a sunny disposition with a light breeze coming in from the west at four miles per hour. You just finished your afternoon walk through the remains of downtown Austin, Texas. You arrive home at your self-made portable tiny home. You take off your Crocs. You flop on the couch. Take a gander at the room. How do you proceed? Well, simple. I'm going to call over my robotic dog, have him fetch a beer from the fridge, chug nice. it, mm. smash the can on my forehead, oh, and shit. then simply pass out. Wow. Oh, oh yes. All right. <laughs> I'm 97 years old and still, <laughs> still got it. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, do you believe crab trapping is a front for the mob? Probably. Yeah. D they'll find a way. Yeah. Yeah. Why? You know, it could be. Why not? Who knows? Yeah. Who fucking knows? Um, got milk? Yes. Beautiful. Um, it's 3.22 p.m. on a Saturday. You've dropped your afternoon snack, a jelly donut, on the ground. In a fit of rage, you stomp on the donut with your brand new pair of green Doc Martens, which now have bits of donut wedge in the soles. Before oh. you know it, ants have started to swarm you, millions upon millions, desperate to get a taste of your sweet, sweet foot coverings. How do you proceed? I find the nearest puddle and then just slosh it around. The shoe's already ruined. Just make it just make it go away as quick as possible. Yeah, just got to get those ants off, man. Just got to get the ants off. Got to get the ants off. You know, I have an okay. irrational fear of ants climbing into my ears. Dude. Okay, so <laughs> I have family in South Alabama and like fire ants are everywhere. Brutal. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> you terrifying. can't walk you can't walk 2 feet without having another <laughs> massive mound right damn i hate those things there was a slide when i was really young when i was i was probably like three or four years old mm. uh like at a playground so like went down the slide and went feet first into these into into the anthill and they were they were up my up there up to my knee in seconds <laughs> oh and God. ever since ever since then i hate those things yeah. if i'm if i'm down there and fireworks are um like a lot more uh like relax like you can you could be able to shoot off fireworks yeah almost any time yeah. um <laughs> what we would do this is awful we would take bottle rockets and dig them into these anthills and then light oh them God. upside down and oh shoot it into it. <laughs> oh man and then sometimes because i mean they would get enraged so then we would we would take bottle rockets and like let it sit there for a minute so they'd climb up onto it and yeah. would light it into the sky and watch them fucking fly off <laughs> <laughs> that's because they come out they come out in swarms those things are they come fucked. out in swarms they're fast and and they are yeah. malicious yeah so this is crazy i there's when, something there was a, like therapeutic about seeing them just <laughs> shoot into the night sky <laughs> they're getting it's like just totally encapsulated in flames you're like back to your yes. birthplace <laughs> yes. die in fire you yes fiend. go back to hell where you belong <laughs> yeah it's so good that's funny i uh i when i lived in florida there was a period of time that i lived in florida the amount of wildlife that's down there just i didn't realize how fucking terrible it was you know yeah and they have grasshoppers down there the size of rabbits i shit okay, you I not about that I, yeah i don't like that neither all. did i <laughs> <laughs> i walked into my fucking grandparents backyard because i was living with them during high school and stuff and i like walked out in the backyard and i saw something on the ground and i was like that's green, but it's really big. What the fuck is that? And it just fucking jumped. And I was like, oh, I was my, like, god. Oh my god, what the? They, they can fly because they have those like little wings, you know? Yeah. Not like long distances, but enough no, to like get somewhere, like you know? Yeah. yeah. And they're fucking, they're huge. And I'm like, oh my, where did you come from? The, the fucking core? Oh, it was oh terrifying. My. It was so weird. I don't know why, but like bugs in general are just kind of little, mm, I just don't like them. No, just they're, don't they're like gross. Them. Spiders, For the most part. yeah, spiders and snakes. Those two are the ones that freak me out the most. Um, but I think that's pretty normal. That's standard. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. pretty standard. Those things are weird. <laughs> yeah, they're just weird. Um, all right. If presented with a bear fight, would you hold your own? No. No. I'm a I'm a fucking twig. <laughs> If I get in a fight with a bear, one swipe and I'm cutting. You're half. done. <laughs> You're fucking done. Um, how many marshmallows can you fit in your mouth at once? At least four. 
At least, hey, <laughs> you are so confident with that answer. I appreciate that. You were like, yeah, I could do four, and I, I know I can do four. I'm going to answer yeah. four. Good no, for you. At least. At least. Yeah, I at least. I might be able to. Who knows? On a, on a, on a, I feel <laughs> Who crazy. Knows? We'll see. Who knows? Um, so you said your favorite fruit was strawberries, and I know that you said your second favorite fruit was apples, but is that true? Is that true, Andrew? I mean, I don't want to hurt you, but I mean, apples are probably like a good third or fourth on my list, <gasps> but I was trying to make you feel better. <sighs> you brought this up. It's fine. It's okay. okay. I, right. you know, I've, I've dealt with Thanks heartbreak for before. Everybody. I'm going to leave before Josh screams <laughs> I've, I've, I've dealt with heartbreak before. It's fine. Um, all right, all right. So, Andrew, now we've gotten a little, uh, gotten to know you a little bit, you know, got, got you loosened up for the conversation. Uh, yeah. Why don't we tell, why don't you tell the, the listeners uh, uh, who you are, where to find you, like where, where, uh, what, what you got going on, like that kind of stuff. Get them, get them to know you a little bit better. Like, tell sure, us about I, you. Yeah, I'm. A, I stream on Twitch. Uh, so it's a, it's twitch.tv slash Androsity one because there's a bastard out there who's taking my name. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> I don't mean that. I don't mean that. He's probably a great guy. Um, <laughs> Fair. Um, yeah, no, I just stream like a variety of games. Uh, I see myself coming back to Pokemon a lot. Pokemon mm. and indie games are like right up my alley. Yeah. So, um, like right now, I'm doing a Heart Gold. Nuzlocke, and I've never played through Gen Gen Two, so mm. everything's new and scary, and I'm really bad at it. So, <laughs> Pokemon. If is you want to see somebody games. struggle at a kids game, fucking, I'm 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 the place to go. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash Androsity One. Get it. there, baby. Um, yeah. No, Pokemon is one of those games that I feel like a lot of people fall back to and just play because it's. It's nostalgic, but also it's it's simple and yet advanced at the same time. Yeah, and it's it's got this like because of the simplicity, it's kind of relaxing just yeah. to go through it and and yeah, go through childhood memories. Even though it's just another thing on my list of things I couldn't participate in when I was younger. So, <laughs> <Sadness. yeah. laughs> dude, it, it, like, <clears throat> I mean, you know, like coming from a, a religious background, yeah. we've we've talked about this, but 100%. like, like. No Harry Potter, no Pokemon, like Yeah. It, it was really weird. Like so so no wizardry, but like me and my dad's favorite franchise was Star Wars. So like no <laughs> yeah. hocus pocus, but space magic, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. I think um, it's I think it really just depends on your parents, you know, because yeah. like there were certain things that I was allowed to do, but Star Wars was okay. Lord of the Rings was okay, which is weird, you know, because that Lord has magic in it. Round upon, but like there were so many people, like my my par parents knew who loved Lord of the Rings that they were like, oh, okay, All yeah. Right. So, um, were were you allowed to participate in in Halloween? Yes, with restrictions. Mm, okay, lots of restrictions. Gotcha. So if something was deemed too, like gory or or had some kind of like i don't know evil background then it was it was not an option for mm. co for costumes um haunted houses were frowned upon um mm. yeah 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 that like kind of stuff. we we would celebrate halloween but i wasn't allowed to like go out and do the trick-or-treating thing and like participate mm. in that until i was like in like eighth grade but i think it was partially just due to safety rather than anything sure. um but my dad loves horror movies and stuff like that, but he likes more like thrillers and like OG horror, like vampires, like Dracula esque and mummy and stuff like that, okay. rather than like poltergeist, ghost, like <laughs> demon stuff, you know? Right. Um, which is understandable. The conjuring. conjuring, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that kind of stuff, like what we didn't really watch. But um, yeah, it was it was only until like high school that my parents became more relaxed with it because, you know, culturally it was just it, things advanced. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I love yeah, my parents change. and yeah, and they, they, they grew as people and it was just kind of things like no, 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 uh, hard feelings to my parents at all. Like, I love the way they raised yeah. me. Obviously Same. there could have been better things, but I'm happy with the, who I am today. You yeah, know, when, like when you look back on it, you're like, I couldn't watch Harry Potter. My parents suck. Okay. You need to like take it. Yeah. Step like back. you're, <laughs> I, I'm happy with who I am. If I hadn't gone, done the things and been the way I was when I was younger, I wouldn't be yeah. who I am today. So yeah. like, can we really exactly. be upset? You know, like we can be like, oh, that sucks. But at the same time, like they, they, they raised me. I was, yeah. I was, I had a roof over my head. I had food on my table, you know, like, you know, um, <laughs> but. And my parents loved me for the yeah, most part. Yeah, like you gotta, you gotta <laughs> take, you gotta take them when you can get them, you know? Right. Um, 
But Andrew, when did when did you start streaming? Uh, I started streaming uh, October, like mid October of 2020. Okay. That was like my first stream. Oh shit! You started um, like the same time I did. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. I was really off and on <clears throat> with it. I didn't really uh, start to like make a schedule until probably around late March, early April mm -hmm. of of 2021. Yeah. Um, and ever since then, I've been pretty consistent things have come up obviously but yeah well, that's, that's all you life, can do you know yeah good for you though for being yeah. mostly consistent it's really hard to be consistent with those things. it's so difficult yeah. it's like there's just days where you like you, you're just like i don't know but i don't know when you do it long enough like that goes away as soon as i hit start streaming that you that feeling for me for the most part yeah. usually goes away there's there's exceptions to the rule but oh 100 percent yeah no I, I love streaming it's so much fun i think that that nervousness that you're talking about i think that like oh god like i'm gonna you know ugh, like this is like you know or this like do day. i really want to do this today yeah. or all those yeah. things uh, for the most part if you're nervous about it it's because you care but then the other part is like it's you've had a long day you've dealt with other things because of your job or whatever and you're just like do i really want to deal with this but then as soon as you start you realize that this is what you do to relax this is what you like so right it just it goes away instantaneously it and does. then obviously things can happen during your stream that oh can make you God. feel like shit <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like oh, fuck <laughs> yeah when you, when you have the day of like i don't want to go live but i'm going to and we're going to see if it if like it, it's going to be fine it's going to be fine yeah. Like you change your mentality and then something happens midstream and you're like i should have never gone live <laughs> and then you're like oh guys i gotta go I, there's some things i need to oh, do and early yeah yeah <laughs> it sucks and i think that i think that's something that a lot of people deal with too is like one finding that drive but then also dealing with like the things that happen on stream you know because we've all oh, yeah. dealt with either a viewer or a friend or 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 just something that happens irl during the stream that can happen and then you're just like do I want to push myself to continue or should I just end now because it's better if I do getting you know? post stress anxiety yeah because I'm thinking exactly of when that <laughs> happened yeah and then you're sitting there <laughs> contemplating that while you're live and then you're like man I haven't talked to chat in like fucking 15 <laughs> minutes and you're like yeah, shit I'm sorry I'm, I'm sorry guys here. oh uh, no. hey guys forgot y'all were here was, um <laughs> I'm yeah so I gotta sorry. go <laughs> yeah I gotta go now I'm sorry I hope you understand my um yeah, it can happen. So what yeah. what's the story behind your name and your theme and like what where did Andro City come from? Uh well Andro City came from <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to say Andro City just because of earlier. I had okay, to say, yeah. so to anyone who doesn't know, we we uh, we started the podcast. I always record the little bit of the the beginning, like the little opener part by myself. So that way I can just do that before they come in, they can prep themselves, the guest. And uh I was like, you know, I've called Andro, Andro, and I've also called them Androsity so much since I've known them, but I think I was introduced to them as Andro. So have I been saying it wrong this whole time? Is it Andro City or is it Androsity? Yeah, <laughs> I so... asked Andrew right before we started, <laughs> so I had to, I had to be like, so where did Andro City come? <laughs> where did that come from, man? Oh man, <laughs> yeah. So I guess there's technically like for for each of them, right? So I was in high school. Yeah. Um, I was in like I was in high school physics, um, and for whatever reason, our teacher was like, "Let's come up with a hypothetical product that is, you know, is supposed." to make life better whatever mm. and so my group came up with like this new uh renewable energy and they and a buddy of mine just was like and we're like we'll call it like something cool futuristic like androsity and then he stopped like you know that freeze frame where he realized <laughs> and he looked yeah. right at me he was <laughs> dun, like, dun, dun. <laughs> your nickname is androsity now and i was like all right <laughs> cool oh and so it was like a nickname for you like people called me Androsity. Like there was a couple of people who like who called me Androsity in high school, and I was like, "Yeah, it's gonna be my new like internet handle." Yeah, um, because I hated the last one, and so <laughs> um, yeah, so it just kind of I don't know, it was born there, just Androsity. And uh, so when I started streaming, and Doug found me, he just called me Andro for short, and so he introduces me to people as Andro, and I, I get that confusion a lot, where it's like, oh, it's Andro City. It's like, no, if you're gonna say it together, it's Ossity. <laughs> Ossity. So, that's yeah. fair. That's fair. But yeah. yeah. So what was your what was your first user handle oh, then? God. <laughs> so so uh, 
when I was young, and even to this day, <laughs> oh, I am God. blind as a bat. All right. Okay. Um, like somebody can tell me exactly where something is to the T, and I won't find it. And so people were like, you might as well be eyeless. And so my username was like eyeless man or something of the sorts. And it just got really old really fast. Yeah. So yeah, that was all it was. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I don't know if you heard mine, but mine was Elf Lord 3000. That's legendary. I don't know why. I just played like, Skyrim you play a lot. Call of Duty. You play Call of Duty. You got killed by Elf Lord 3000. You're running for you your turn life. You off the console. You're done. Yeah, you just smash your controller. Yeah, you can cry to your mom. Yeah, take it to GameStop. That they won't <laughs> even take it back, back noob. at that point. <laughs> 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 <No>. <laughs> so, so Andrew, um, you've been streaming for a while now. Um, yes. What What's your favorite part about streaming? You know, and there's no right or wrong answer because obviously there's more than one thing. But what's What's your personal favorite? Mine's two part. Okay. So I love the community. I have such. A great chat and mm -hmm. being able to like say that i've helped cultivate and grow uh just every everything about it and and uh, everybody's so supportive it's it's so it's so nice i i yeah. appreciate each and every one of them they're fantastic people and and just being able to yeah be a part of that is so cool the second part is a bit selfish um <laughs> okay it's not anything crazy, but I love how it's affected me. Um, whereas, like, I used to be really, really introverted, and I still am, right? Mm. Um, but like, if you were if you were to talk to me two years ago today, um, I I was the kind of person who kind of just like stood there and like just listened. I was a brick wall. I would I would like input every now and then. Yeah. Um, but it was it was very few and far between. I, I didn't have a lot of like social confidence. Um, and, and it was something I always hated, but I just kind of took a risk like streaming and and it's made me be more comfortable and come out of my shell and just be me at a more vocal level. So I yeah. I was like, even if you look at old streams or old clips, you can hear a difference. And I, I love seeing that progress for myself. So that's why I think it's somewhat selfish just like it's for me <laughs> you know yeah I, I honestly i wouldn't say it's selfish at all i think that's i think it's one of the the biggest things for a lot of people who've done it for a long time because like there's <laughs> there's nothing more awkward than going and raiding into someone and them doing a clip player for your shout out and your old oh. clips playing because every time i see that <laughs> like I, i'm just like oh god which ones are pulling which ones are pulling? i know well okay it, so side note a little derail moment we like to call oh, okay. on on the here on the bin josh podcast um but like even even now like clips that i have currently a lot of a lot of my viewers and also my mods will clip me out of context yes and so it's so like i'll go in and raid someone and a clip plays and i'm like come in my mouth you know <laughs> and, and i'm like oh god no please like like this is oh this looks so bad <laughs> you know That's but so funny. <laughs> but like, like you never know what it's gonna be because a lot of times like no. i try to go back and i look at my clips to make sure there yeah. is ones you know that are good um yeah. but there are gonna be a couple in there that just fall through the cracks and you just have no idea um yeah, i just found one the other day that was literally just my brb screen for 30 seconds nothing else <laughs> literally just Hell in my yeah. old one so there was nothing there no clips or anything it was just music and the brb screen that's awesome <laughs> I was like delete. <laughs> um, but going back to what we were saying, sorry, um, was with old clips and stuff, like whenever one comes up, like it's not that they're cringy, they're just cringy to us. <laughs> sure. You know? Because yeah. like you see it and you're like, oh wow, like I was so quiet. My mic is weird, the layout looks different, I'm like so awkward, like, oh my god, like you know, like why was I playing that game? Like, you know, right. just like all all the little things, they're just like self-conscious things yeah. that we're, we're putting on ourselves but what in the same vein and i'm sure you were getting to this but like that was something like like people f took the time to clip that that was a moment they enjoyed a hundred percent and the fact that you're able to look at that mm -hmm. and go and no that's I bad grew. i'm i can do that better yeah today and it's like that yeah, that means yeah, that's you grow as, so fun. as so a nice. streamer yeah no i i yeah. agree a hundred percent i and i think that's something that at least I try to do um, like at least once every six months or so, especially if there's like a big thing that we're like celebrating is 
I'll just go back and watch old clips because it's nice to see how far you've come. It's nice to be reminded because sometimes you do need to get reminded because sometimes like you were saying earlier with like the bad mindsets, like we've, we've done a lot. It doesn't matter how many followers you have, how many viewers you have or anything. Like if you've been streaming for a while over like it's a couple months, like you've already done a lot of work. Yeah. You've put in a lot of time, you know, and you should be proud of that because you, you took the time to do it. Even if it was a hobby, it's a job, whatever it is, you put in the time to do that. And it's so hard nowadays to get the motivation to put effort into something. And like, I think that's, I think it's really important that we, we congratulate ourselves. That's not selfish. You know, you should be happy. Just like we said it earlier with our parents. It's like, I'm happy with who I am, you know, yeah. and I'm happy with how much I've done. And so getting a reminder of that is nice. It's good. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I just always feel like anytime I'm like, I like doing this for me. And it's like, <laughs> well, and, you know. and that's the thing, like you find joy in it. It's your pastime. Yeah. It's your, it's the thing that relaxes you. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, you don't hear people being like, you're selfish for playing that video game because you like it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> all right. All right. All you right. All right. I, I make them, I'm making a valid point here. You're Andrew. making so many valid points Thank and you've you. already changed my mind. I changed uh, your mind. Oh my God. <laughs> holy shit holy shit did i really wait on what oh no <laughs> just like talking about how it's like selfish like oh, oh yeah, yeah. You no, you're yeah, not yeah, selfish yeah. you're not selfish at all andrew you cute little nugget all right are we all right, ready don't. all right yeah yeah, yeah ready <laughs> <laughs> all right so this is a little section we like to call how do you like them apples yeah all right so this is <laughs> how do you like them apples you have to tell me a fact, anything you, you want. It literally could be anything. Um, and then I will tell you a fact. It could be something that's well known. It could be something that you just remembered from that one class from fucking forever ago. It could be literally anything. All right. I will give you okay. a fact and then you give me a fact. Are you ready? I'm ready. What's your fact? Nutmeg is a hallucinogen. Really? Yeah. I didn't. I read it on Twitter the other day and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I did not know that. Why do you think like, people get crazy during Christmas? <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> the holiday season, everyone's not. No, I'm just kidding. But like, yeah. if if taken in like large doses, nutmegs, it has like a natural compound within it that's a hallucinogen, and like you can, it's just it's mind altering. Altering. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Oh you're just God. having cookies at Christmas. You're like, whoa, the room's whoa. spinning. <laughs> How yeah, much nutmeg did this? you put in this, mama? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's funny. What's All your right. fact, my friend? Uh, did you know that honeybees can travel up to three miles away from the hive to forage for pollen and nectar? Three miles? Three miles. Two to three miles is like the average. Damn. Yeah, they get out yeah, there. Damn. They go, they go on a hike. <laughs> I mean, that's not, that makes sense though, because if you think about like the size of, well, actually, no, compared to the size of it's still three miles. Three miles is a distance. They so let fly alone up to the fifteen miles an hour. Fifteen miles anything. an hour? Can you believe that? Fucking Christ! <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah. Zoom. He's zooming. <laughs> they fucking gotta go fast. Yeah. Dear Lord. But if you think about it, that makes sense though, because like with so many bees, mm -hmm. like in a in one hive. They kind of have to spread themselves out to get as many flowers as they can because there's not flowers just everywhere. They're no. you know, far and few in between. So um, that makes which, sense. Which makes it like even even crazier. It's like there, there are certain beekeepers that will like plant specific flowers to get like different color or flavor profile. Yeah. For honey. And the amount that they have to plant to be able to accommodate for a hive. It's crazy. Anyway. Speaking <clears throat> on that front, this is something that I wanted yep. to talk about today, and you knew yep. it was coming. <laughs> it was coming. coming I, I like I, apples. I, I dove straight into it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Ahead. I like apples. That's my thing. And apparently, Andro, you like bee and bee, bees and beekeeping, right? I do. Apparently. <laughs> That's oh, what okay. I've been hearing. There's okay. been tall tales. <laughs> <laughs> um, so where did where did that interest come from? Where did that like where did that derive from? So in my last two years of high school, 11th, 12th grade um, here in the States, I was homeschooled. And so... Oh, no shit. <clears throat> Were you really? Yeah. I was yeah. homeschooled. Yeah. Holy fuck. I was, I was homeschooled, like, quick tangent, uh, fourth grade, eighth grade, and then 11th, 12th. I was... Uh -huh. 
it wasn't consistent and mm-hmm. it like happened at moments notice each time <laughs> um but yeah so for those last two years of my high school education i uh, i was homeschooled um my mom had a curriculum i went through it every day and mm-hmm. it probably took me like four to five hours right compared oh, yeah. to it was so quick <laughs> it was so quick so it was quick. so nice so nice so the rest of that time i I mean, I helped out around the house, you know, did yard work, whatever it may have been that yeah. day. But my hobbies were literally just video games at that point. Mm. So my mom and dad came to me and was like, you need to find a hobby. Um, <laughs> I don't care what it is. Find fucking something. And I said, OK, hey, bees are pretty cool, aren't they? And they went, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, that was so, not what I was expecting. <laughs> so we went and got all the equipment. We went and bought uh, five pound boxes of bees which is like 10,000 oh bees, by God. the way. Um, started up two hives, and I did that for the two years to finish. And uh, yeah, no, it was it was so nice. I found so much peace in it. Like, I could sit in front of the entrance to the beehive, like, no gear, and just, like, let the bees buzz around me. And it just, like, it was like meditating. It was so nice. Yeah, yeah That's so, so interesting. Yeah. Power t- that's so cool. So that was, like, junior and senior year, you did that as just, like, a, a thing on the side yeah damn so how much how much honey did you make well they so, made <laughs> but, um yeah they made they I made stole. you cultivate it. Yeah, um, no. <laughs> uh well first year hive you don't get very much um we probably got like i don't know maybe like three or four gallons like we were very sparing with it so they had some for the winter hmm. um you can take more you can take i mean yeah and you just supplement them with with sugar like solid sugar cubes and they eat that instead um but we just didn't uh the second year we were really excited because that's a full that's a full strength hive they're going to be able to produce so much they've already got um a ton of honeycomb background or uh like uh like built up already Mm -hmm. so they can be able to just produce honey um come to find out i mean we knew about them but we didn't know that they're going to be as aggressive as they were uh there was bees that were like right down the road um Mm. there's another beekeeper and they came down and i i remember going outside and just seeing a huge swarm not really knowing what was going on um and it wasn't like i was watching it and they were they were like tumbling over each other like pretty aggressively um that i looked it up there was there was a raid happening so the other bees were coming to our hive stealing honey running off our bees and then within the next week or two they were just gone all your like bees? my bees my bees f- flew off they said fuck it they we're migrating not probably somewhere yeah. else yeah typically Damn. like so like you can find swarms but that's usually like the hive splitting yeah um, they just they just or they just bounced Damn, so that's we didn't get a, yeah so beekeeping oh, uh yeah you could just lose all your that's bees like losing quickly. a pet like <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's got to be so like disheartening, man. Yeah, it's it's Damn. crushing. And then uh, 2020, uh, I was down living with my parents, and uh, during COVID, right? So COVID hit. I lost yeah. my job. Uh, restaurant closed down. So I was like, all right, I'm just gonna go live with y'all for a little bit. And they were like, yes, please come <laughs> live with us. We miss you, and it's yeah. pretty cool. So uh moved down there and right when i was getting there uh my dad came up to me he's like hey this weekend we're gonna go pick up bees and i was like oh okay (laughs) (laughs) cool we pulled out all the equipment and went and got uh beekeeping apparently my so my parents lived like because alabama south alabama just so much land yeah uh my uncle and my parents live on the same property um uh like right next to each other adjacent adjacent and my uncle's friend was like hey if i buy the bees will you take care of them like talking to my dad and mm. he's like sure i can do that as a side project it's not a big deal and because he wanted honey he wanted to be able to turn some of it into mead oh, yes. um, which is really good if you've never tried it definitely recommend it Bro, it's delicious i want to make mead so bad i know the whole process and i've looked it all up i just yeah. don't have the space in my apartment right now and when i move Me and my buddy what... made mead oh. uh it was delicious it's so delicious. good dude <laughs> it's so good um but yeah that was his his idea he just wanted to pay somebody or yeah. yeah pay for the bees and let somebody else take care of them um and so i just happened to be coming down like a couple of days before my dad went and picked him up so i got to take care of more bees beekeep during that whole summer mm. um 
and then a hurricane hit that auto oh my god so there was no bees anymore oh my god dude that's <laughs> so sad holy shit so maybe it's a sign right that i shouldn't beekeep maybe, maybe it's just not your universe time. Telling me. Maybe. maybe it's not your maybe time. it's that maybe maybe, maybe you're gr- growing until the prime time when you have your own place and you right. can do have your own yard and be able to do it yourself again and maybe that will be the day I, I was planning on giving it a try. I'm just, you know, I have no expectations. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fair. I mean, after two two hives being gone, that's got to be. Oh. Yeah. Well, Damn. five. Five hives. Oh my, oh, my God. Five hives? No, that's bad math. Three hives. Yeah. Three hives? Yeah, because we got two the first time. And then the and one the second? Gone. And then the one the second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. God yeah. damn. So was the it's first sad. time, was it because there was another beekeeper down the road? Uh, how do you mean? Sorry for the... <laughs> oh, no, you're good. You gotta drink water. It's, it's good to hydrate. Everybody who's listening, hydrate. I know you're not hydrate. talking or hey. you're just listening, but whatever you're doing right now, take a moment. Take a moment. Stay healthy. Fucking, fucking hydrate, you pleb. All right? Yeah, I'm looking what at you. What is wrong with you? you yeah, know who you are. We can see you right now through your fucking monitor. All right? <laughs> or through Yeah, I bet you're looking around like, like shit, do I have my camera on? You do. And we're watching. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. We're the FBI, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> the joke is not you. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, anyway, no, for the first two hives, you were saying like, the, the raid that happened. Like fucking Vikings come and get it, taking Dude, over. It, these are <laughs> fucking crazy. Oh, like, can, reading yeah. about them, like, if a queen doesn't produce enough, the rest of the bees will kick her out they'll make another queen oh and then like kick the old one out sorry like, bits it. move out of the way <laughs> yeah we got oh my god taken over. <laughs> oh my it god does. um no um, that's crazy but like that I mean, that raid that happened was it because someone else was hovering having bees down the road i would like to think so right mm-hmm. like the, the the that's something that's out of both of our control like there's nothing yeah. against them right oh no it's no natural um yeah, I mean, they were building up really well. Uh, bees are really strange. Like you, it, like so, you've got your boxes, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, not the technical term, but uh, so you've got these boxes. You've got frames inside of them. Yeah. You don't want to like add too much because it can stress them out, and they'll work slower to build up mm-hmm. if there's too much space that they're building into. So you have to like do it gradually. They yeah. were like they were so fast, like building straight up into the boxes. Um, it was going great, and then yeah, they're suddenly so many bees around that that whole situation so yeah, yeah I, I like to think that uh if it wasn't for for the other beehive uh being as aggressive i would still have mine but i mean there's no way of knowing yeah. you know maybe yeah. maybe it was me and i just, i've been no. shifting no. this entire time <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> well that's the thing it's like then to me I, for me it was just a, the mindset of it would be interesting to see like oh if it's just because like in that three mile radius like your how do you like them apples fact is it right. just like you can't be in that distance to another person who's no. hiving like it's not it's no. just like no random. There's, there's there's hundreds of of beehives in a in like a professional apiarist's bee yard yeah so like i mean and it's not like they're all gonna be buddy buddy with each other you know mm. there's raiding that happens on the same a like the same beekeepers property yeah that makes uh, sense multiple so. queens multiple you know yeah. yeah that happens so that makes sense interesting no i uh i love mead i'm excited to talk to you about me because i know you like mead as well um yeah. i i found out about it um solely because of my infatuation with uh um norse mythology and like vikings yes. and stuff and i was like mm-hmm. oh they drink mead like what the fuck is mead i want to know about mead and so i found uh, a place that was selling it where I grew up and I was like, okay, as soon as I turn 21, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to buy it and I'm going to try it for the first time. And then of course, you know, shame, shame on me. When, when I started dating, uh, my wife, joy, um, uh, she was over 21 and I was not 21. And so oh. she was able to buy alcohol for me. I know <sighs> shame on me. Shame yeah. on me. I'm such a little rebel. Her. I, I can't stand this. This is <laughs> my family. I no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was the thing. It's like I don't think my parents would have mind 
but sure. it's still like illegal guys don't drink don't drink if you're not 21 it does stuff yeah. to your brain but yeah. me being a rebel rebellious kid be, because my dad's a pastor i was like oh yeah let's fucking let's fucking drink man mm. um so we got some mead it was everything i had hoped it to be i know there's a lot of people who don't like the taste of honey but if you like honey try mead because mead yeah. is literally honey wine in, in the <laughs> purest form because it is literally the same process of making wine but mm -hmm. the glucose that you use in it is honey and yes. it's just sweet it's so smooth Have and because had... of oh sorry oh sorry no i was just gonna ask if if you'd ever had uh like any other back sweetened with like citrus yes or if i have only had okay yeah 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 so like <laughs> huge that, game changer too oh like, no you don't it's even insane have to, like honey for those those are that's, delicious that's the thing like with, not only are there different types of of honey like you were talking about with the different profiles of like different flowers and whatnot but like with the back sweetener like you're saying like most like honey and then you add something else like um, ginger or lemon or apples or cherry. That's a big one. The vi whole Viking's yeah. blood, you know, yes. or like cherries or, or all anything. I think um, a, a really good one is um, oranges. I think mm -hmm. it pairs really fucking yeah. well with it. Um, Cause it, the rind of a, of an orange, I don't know what it, I I've said this on stream before and I will say it one more time here and now. And Andrew, I'm so sorry that you have to hear this. But I, for okay. some fucking reason, the mm -hmm. smell of oranges turns me oh, on. I don't yeah, know why. Heard, okay. I yeah, don't know okay. why. It's just such it's an interesting. It's just interesting that weird little. <laughs> it's a weird hey, little just take advantage of it, man. You're fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I like yeah. I like fruit. But uh, anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the orange rind, it's it's got like that, like vanilla is like it yeah, smell to it. Yeah, Same yeah, with yeah. limes. Lime have like a vanilla smell to it. I don't know why. But it's got that citrus as well, so it pairs well with the, the the sweetness, you know. Oh yeah. And oh man, there's just so many different types. I had an apple there mead is. one time, and it was oh, so oh, fucking yeah. good. If you if you'd never had a back sweetened, I've been like, okay, you gotta start with this one. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, I had an avocado mead one time. Ooh, okay. Dude, it was the weirdest fucking thing. It was so smooth. It was like, it, I wouldn't I wouldn't compare it to like drinking butter. <laughs> <laughs> but like it's got the it just it was like heavy but like in a good way like it was like a okay. it was like a it was like a thick beer like a like a Guinness you know like it yeah. just had that like natural fattiness to it um but it was it oh. was delicious dude yeah there's a there's a meadery that's actually relatively close to where I am now yeah. um and the restaurant I work at has been buying mead to be able to sell like we have it on oh, tap shit at where i work yeah it's Fuck yeah. awesome that's so yeah, awesome so we've had we've had cranberry there's been pomegranate there's been oh. grapefruit every one of them has been delicious so i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to like figure out where exactly it's at and i'm just gonna go and yeah buy the entire place this is mine now <laughs> um <laughs> hey that not a bad idea i found a meadery in vermont that uh sells like canned versions of mead and they okay. sell them by the, the can so you can buy cases and they'll ship it to you. And so oh. I've been doing that because where I'm at, it's pretty far from where I grew up. So I can't like go down to that one that I found and like get it um, right. like bottled versions. But they not, not only sell like a 8% APV like version of mead. So it's like a beer. Um, right. It's not full mead. Um, but they also sell actual bottles of like pure mead of like honey 18, 19, and, and yeah. cherry and all that stuff and it's actual wine um right. but it's 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 really good um yeah i highly recommend anyone who's listening go try mead if you like if you like wine and you like honey go give it a go if you like wine you like honey and you're at least 21 in the states what is it 18 in most other places <laughs> Be safe. Yeah, be That's safe. The main thing. Follow <laughs> your your state's uh, guidelines, please. Yes. Um, or country's guidelines, depending on where you are. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, no, it's so good. I love it. I, it's cool to hear it. it's someone else who talks about mead because that's the thing. Mead, as as popular as it has been over the decades and decades of like yeah. humanity, um, it it's not that popular. It's not that popular anymore. It's a and niche thing. Just, like, don't know about it. Like, yeah. at the restaurant we're serving it, and they're like, "What is mead?" And I'm like, "Okay, first off, it's the <laughs> oldest form of alcohol known to humankind." Yes! So <laughs> <laughs> that's the craziest part. Is like everyone's like, "Oh, Vikings, they're drinking beer." And it's like, no, no, <laughs> they were drinking honey. And the only reason that's the cool part about like mead is I'm pretty. I don't 
don't quote me on this. I'm I'm taking taking this out of to the pocket of my brain that I remember. I might be misquoting, but um, as far as I remember, the only reason they found out about Mead was they had their water barrels out behind like their their the yard houses and stuff, and they would sit there because the fresh water you don't they don't just drink right from the fucking river and stuff. They you know natural springs they would get water uh, from the fill barrel put in their backyard the bees would ingrain themselves in the wood and stuff and then it naturally fermented in the water from the honey that was in the hive next to their storehouses and they like and so like naturally fermented itself and they came over and they like got some water and they're like holy fuck why do i feel like woozy <laughs> And they're like, then they realized that it was sweet and they realized that it was because of the honey. And so then they started testing things out and they figured it out themselves and they were able to make meat, which I think is just a crazy fucking thing. They were just like, cause you, you always, you don't, people don't think about the fact that like, how do we know how to milk a cow? You know? Yeah. Like somebody, we, somebody, some weirdo. Someone had to get the down there. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, mm, let me just squeeze this. You know? <laughs> You know, I think with eggs, all oh, that thing just fell out of the chicken's ass. Yeah, Ooh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it's just one of those things that it's like obviously, yeah, we understand that eggs become something else, and we we realize that. But like the first person to do those things, yeah, like how do they with know? How much of a process it is. Oh yeah, and some things that so, are poisonous that once you yeah. cultivate it, it's not like cashews. I didn't know this, cashews, but there's a film. To, yeah, there's yeah. a film over cashews that if you do not take that film off, it's poisonous. It, it can kill you. We had a, we had a joke. I don't know how it came up like in my high school world history class, but we were like, damn, poor Uncle Jerry found out the hard way. Like for like any time we talked about a product that was yeah. like widespread. So, I mean, yeah, it's just crazy. like stuff like that and, and just discovery and the people we had to lose along the way. Thank you, Jerry. Um, Thank you. Thank you out there. <laughs> you Whoever really out there who, who picked the nut and was like, mm, this is good and then died afterwards and we realized. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, hey, it's crazy. Pieces, you helped us. <laughs> yeah, I always, I always like to joke about the fact that because of apples, there's a lot of things exist. Because, like, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, like gravity exists because of apples. Like, <laughs> and obviously not because gravity still existed, but like gravity was discovered because of apples, and like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, a lot sure. of the other things, like, you know, we can fuck because of apples, because Eden and like because of Eden. <laughs> because of an apple we can we can have sex and be you know be naked and eat, <laughs> do, all, do all the fun stuff and sin because of apples you know i had a we can do all the fun stuff and sin because of this fruit <laughs> yes yes <laughs> apples are the reason we fuck yep um amen <laughs> <laughs> um no matter what your what your religion is everyone out there um no 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 uh no hate no towards you at all. In, in, yeah. um, I I think that uh, whatever your faith is or your your morale or, or not morale morals. Uh, I said morale like ha ha yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, whatever your morals are, you know, like you do you. Whatever whatever you feel is best for you. That's how you should live your life. I feel that's how I feel about everything. Um, and I think it goes for uh, a lot of different situations. Is uh, yeah. you got to do what's best for you. You know. Um, personally for me it's not for me but i can respect anyone who does think that that's for them because if that works for them that works for them i mean, there's nothing i can't judge that you know just because yeah. you don't like apples like i'm not gonna be like fuck you you <laughs> piece of shit <laughs> well, i'm still sitting here i know exactly <laughs> exactly dude strawberries are good though i love oh, strawberries I, I was saying that my i think my my second runner up if it wasn't apples is blueberries because blueberries are just so fucking good especially because they're good. dude they're so easy yeah. to like grow and then like harvest yourself like blueberry bushes dude yeah oh, that's what i want to kind of same thing blackberries are more like a weed but like i know but i my here in pennsylvania blackberries are just so common like yeah. a lot of places when you buy a house like in, in the back area of your house normally it just has a bush of blackberries so like you got fruit like that was how you know? it was at uh my grandmother's house and so yeah. like every summer we made uh blackberry jam oh, and so yeah house made blackberry jam mm. oh so good so good so good dude that, that fruit in general just fruit's is, amazing fruit's so good like i used to not like fruit really when i was younger yeah Interesting. See, I I was the other way. I didn't like vegetables when I was younger. But I loved me some veggies. Yeah, it's weird. I, 
Now yeah. I fucking love vegetables. Like, give me asparagus, give me Brussels sprouts, all those ones that people are like, eh. Like, I like kale. I love kale. Dude, kale's delicious. Kale's so good. Also, have you ever had wheatgrass? No. Okay, so it's like a it's like a type of grass. Like it's obviously it's an answer like a family member of that, you know, um, that thing of grass, but it's it's like it's really it grows really, really quickly, but when you blend it, it becomes like really like it's sweet it Ooh. tastes it tastes like almost like sugary and it has that taste of like grass um when i had my wife try for the first time she's like this tastes like fern <laughs> she's like, this tastes like a fern um which i responded with how do you know what a fern tastes like but <laughs> that's, um, a fair question. that's a fair response you know what <laughs> yeah but um no, it's really good and it's really like healthy for you because it's got like a shit ton of like vitamins and minerals in it. Um, but it's 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 one of those whole foods things that if you go to like a juice bar, they normally have like a shelf full of growing wheatgrass that they can just trim off and throw into a smoothie. But it's um it's really it's really good in my opinion. Um interesting, interesting. I highly recommend it just to give it a try. It's good. Yeah, I'm willing to try anything. They put on so. they put it in salads a lot because it's kind of got that like shape of like a, a scallion. Like it's got that like it's kind of it's a little it's a little tough to chew, you know. Mm -hmm. But like it's yeah. it's got that sweetness that just picks you up, you know. It's it's mm. tasty. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, so you you're also mentioning the uh, juice bars would have like wheatgrass there, right? Yeah. And they would throw it into the to the smoothies. Yeah, I have heard before i don't know if you've mentioned it in the past and we weren't able to talk about it then but you used to own your own juice bar yes right yes okay <laughs> so in the same vein as when you're asking me how i got into beekeeping when how why <laughs> <laughs> okay um so i've talked about this on the podcast before um it's it kind of started like i always worked jobs for myself like i was homeschooled up until uh like high school my freshman year mm -hmm. Um, so I grew up in a, a pretty poverty family. Like we were like very low middle class, obviously, like we had certain benefits that obviously other people don't. So I, I can't be like, oh, yeah, I was like in the slums, you know, like um, but we we did live very modestly. And so I didn't have any like allowance or anything like that. So if I wanted to go out and do something, I learned that I had to get a job myself. And so mm -hmm. when I was like. I want to say like 10 I started doing like paper delivery, going to help with some people from our churches, like lawn work, like, you know, shoveling, doing the the leaves in the fall, like weed whacker, that kind of stuff, just mowing and stuff like that, just to get some extra cash in my pocket so I could be like, okay, I'm going to go see a movie at the movie theater, or oh, I want to buy this video game, or um, I want to go have some Chinese food, you know, um, just something, something like that, you know, and uh, I then I realized that I liked working for myself because I realized that you can make more money because it's not going through a third party, you know? Right. And so I was like, oh, let me let me do balloon animals because I thought that would be fun to learn. And so I started doing balloon animals and I started doing fairs and stuff. And then I made like a button business where I would do like the pins and stuff and I have a machine and whatnot. And I still have that today. I do that every once in a while. It's fun. Um, but then come high school time, and I was still doing balloons and I was still doing um, the button business. And I was just like, I really want to do theater. That was like what I, what I thought I wanted to do with my, my life. I wanted to do shows and plays and whatnot. And um, I decided that after going to Florida, because I went to a magnet school in Florida for a period of time to do theater, like more professionally in high school, um, I just realized that wasn't like what I wanted to do with my life. Um, and so when I came back to PA, I was like, oh shit, well, fuck, what am I going to go to college for? Uh, and this was during my senior year. And I realized that I wanted to do something business related. I just didn't know what. And I, I had a friend who wanted to catch up and talk about Florida. And so we met up and he was telling me about how there was a space available in the front of his, um, jujitsu studio that they wanted to make into a juice bar but they didn't want to do all the effort themselves. They were kind of looking for a third party to come in and pick up where they left off in the renovations and also start their own thing. And so that way they wouldn't have to deal with it, but they would also have something that's in their, their gym that they could offer as like a pre or after workout, you know, regimen or whatever. 
Um, and so I was like, well, shit, like, what's the lease? And they were like, oh, it's this. And it was like really cheap. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to just fucking go all in. I have no fucking experience, <laughs> but I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. And so I made it my senior project for school and, yeah. uh, also my work study as well. So I got to leave early. And so for my entire senior year, I had like two classes every day and then I would leave and just go to the, the juice bar. And, um, I, I renovated the rest of the, the, the place. Um, we, we finished the bar. Uh, I built my own furniture and, uh, oh, wow. yeah, okay. it, was, it was fancy shit. It was really bad. They were, I'll show you pictures after, <laughs> after we record okay. this. Um, <laughs> um, but it was nice and I was very proud of it. I obviously didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Um, and I decided to do the juice bar because I had already known a lot about being vegan and vegetarian and people with gluten intolerance and stuff. So the, the juice bar itself was vegan and also gluten free completely. Nice. Um, wow. Okay. And so we, we served waffles. Um, that was, uh, the guy who owned the jujitsu studio had a company that would have waffles. Um, and they were gluten free. He made them himself. He made up his own recipe for, uh, these gluten free waffles and they were fucking, sl they were banging. They were really Ooh. fucking good. You couldn't tell that they were made with like, um, gluten free, pa like, flour um and so we served the waffles and we had the juice and we had smoothies and that was all we we served that was it um and uh, i made up my own recipes for the smoothies and the juices and um we had like a full wall that was like chalkboard <laughs> and uh i'd read the whole i had a friend come in and did the art for the the menu and we opened and uh within eight months i closed <laughs> oh <laughs> because that was the thing like I'm proud of my that another thing that we were talking about earlier is like that was just something from my past that obviously I was not prepared for and I learned a lot from it and it but you sucks. learned a lot and like if exactly. I, I feel like some of that like branding and and just planning for the future like can lead into streaming and oh like, yeah you've been able to build off of that knowledge and kind of had a jump start when you got into this exactly which it's is so cool something that i've realized only through streaming so another another thing that we've been talking about is the fact that i like brand management Mm. I, the, I something that I've realized through this is I love streaming. Don't get me wrong. It's one of my favorite things to do. I love everything that comes along with this doing it as a job. However, the thing that excites me the most with the behind the scenes stuff, let alone streaming, putting that aside, um, is coming up with the brand and the design and everything. Whenever I see other people who are streaming and they have got a look, I come up with so many ideas. Like for me, it's hard for me to be like, oh, I want to do this because um, you're over, I'm overly, overly critical on myself, but when I see other people, yeah. I have so many ideas for people and I like talking to them and throwing ideas at them because that's what I like to do. And I'm realizing that if I, <laughs> that part of side of business is probably what I should have gone into for college. I didn't, and I didn't go to college in the end. Cause I opened the juice bar. I was like, why fucking go to college if I'm already doing this as a business, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have the time to, for, to juggle for both. Exactly. Um, mm. so I ended up not going to college, but I realized that like this would probably have been the thing that I went to college for if I had taken a couple years off and then gone is brand management because I, it excites me. I like coming up with like, what's your theme? What's your what what kind of branding colors do you want to have? How would you how would you go about with your your audience, or your consumer? Like what what things would you push towards them? What kind of like brand um, personality would you be? Like, even if you were a food item, like, would you be more comical? Would you be more serious? How would you frame yourself? How would you talk to them? How would like those types of things? If that excites me. I don't know why, but I really enjoy that type I of mean, thing. That's fun. It's yeah. fun. And one and like two, you've got the passion for it. Like hearing you talk about this. I love hearing people just go on about something that they love. And this is oh, it's so much fun. OK, yeah, no, you've got like <laughs> I, I it's an, it's ah. enjoyable for me. But obviously, like if I would ever want to do something like that, I would definitely want to go and take classes for it because there's definitely yeah. terminology and all that kind of stuff that I don't know. Um, and I would love to be more adept with like graphic art, like being able to do more graphic design, because um, I think that would be a really useful skill if i ever went with there because obviously like social media and all that those <laughs> platforms um and i think that everyone who streams uh except for the few outliers is just god awful at social media 
It is I so am hard. Terrible at Dude, it. I it set is... up a Twitter yesterday. <laughs> Bro, and I, I hate saw it. that. I'm so happy. <laughs> I added you about the podcast as the announcement of doing it. And I was like, oh shit, he doesn't have a fucking Twitter. I don't have Twitter. <laughs> and and, and Female Sparrow's like, I I'm gonna bully eight, him so bad. I woke up at 8 30 that morning, probably when you were talking about it, Sparrow going, hey. Hey, hey, why don't you have Twitter? <laughs> I was like, uh, oh, I'm just waking man. up. <laughs> You're like, what's happening? Fuck. No, but my uh, phone's blowing up. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to remember to post stuff because when, like, as you were saying, too, I love how this is another derail moment with Ben Josh. Um, yeah. I love how every single podcast that I have, the one thing that I talk about is so generalized, but then we kind of go on tangents about the, that thing and then move on to other things, but. Things that we talk about at the beginning normally fucking come full circle at the end and we talk about it again. And right. I love that. I love yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's fun. I mean, it's like you planned it. I, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking don't. Come um, on, man. I threw you a softball. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> take it. I'm sorry. Um, but with, with like Twitch and stuff, you know, we grow as, as people. And I think it's funny that like all of us, we're like, Oh yeah, I want to stream because it's it sounds fun and stuff. But we're both introverted, you and I both. And yeah. I, I personally, when I was younger, would never post on Instagram. I had one, but I never post on it because I was like, if I went out to a amusement park or with my friends or sub, my first initial thought wasn't to I'm going to take a post a picture and post it. Like I was never one to share the things. I was like more of like, oh, I'm going to live in the moment kind of person. There's nothing wrong with people who do take those photos. It's just I personally never was that person because I was an introvert. And as I grew up, I became more extroverted, but I'm still introverted when I'm with my like my wife and I'm here in my house. However, like now I need to be more extroverted when it comes to social media and I'm just not used to it. It's not it's ingrained in my brain trigger and just yeah. to like get going with it. Uh, yeah, no, because I've had I had Facebook, I had Instagram. I've deleted both of those and like I'm just now getting back into the social media. Like I've had Reddit. Yeah. never posted anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but like I have it so I can keep up with with things going on or different topics. But yeah. like and like I said, just yesterday got my Twitter. And it was it was a struggle. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, it was rough. I, yeah. I, I think Twitter is the best, to be honest. I used to hate it, but now it's my favorite. OK, I look forward to that because like the setup really, really frustrated me. Like it, <laughs> it gave me a handle and it created a password for me mm-hmm. when I was trying to create it. Yeah. And because it created my password, I couldn't change my handle and I got so frustrated. With that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's weird at first. But then once you get yeah. it, it's actually a lot of fun. Plus, it gives you availability to change your name. Like your handle yeah. stays the same, but you can just change your name to whatever the fuck you want. Right. And it's just I don't know if you if you have good people that you follow so your your like for you page is sure is nice i like i learn things all the time like when i'm scrolling through i see a lot of people from twitch there's a lot of twitch stuff but then i also get news about things from twitch and also like other people that i probably wouldn't have learned otherwise and so it's nice as like an information source but it's also a really good place to post memes i post yeah. shit all the time on there it's so much fun <laughs> it's so I'll good have to, i'll have to mess around with it a bit more because yeah, yeah it's, i'm excited yeah. to see you grow into twitter <laughs> yeah we'll see we'll see <laughs> oh man so andrew tell me yes. about your, oh. your your twitch experience um is there anything exciting coming up that you have planned anything any games you're excited to be playing soon that is coming out what 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 are you excited for i <sighs> dude okay so there's this game called cult of the lamb coming out in like two weeks from now i think i saw the trailer for that it looks so good it's such a cute art style and then it gets satanic and it's weird (laughs) but like (laughs) we do like a a weird indie game (laughs) it it is a very weird indie game and it i got to play the demo i played it on stream and it was such a good time yeah um i don't know there's that's pretty much it i'm gonna be part of a couple of collabs going on through august Oh, yeah. uh, I don't have too much information on that right now. Um, that'll be coming up in the next couple of weeks, I could imagine. Yeah. Uh, as because it's gonna be later August. Yeah. For it, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm doing. Oh well, by the time this goes live, this live, it's uh over. <laughs> it's gonna be on Tuesday. So that's already happened. Yeah. Sorry you missed <laughs> it, but there's probably gonna be a vod. Yeah. Yeah. There's gonna be a vod. It's gonna be a good time. Yeah. Playing a. Uh, 
doing a Pokemon race with G Max. Uh, so oh, hell yeah. Fun. Hell yeah. That would yeah. be sick. Um, guys, obviously, all of his information is down below. So if you want to go check out his stuff, please do. Go go check it out. It's a good time. Um, what I wanted to ask was do you have a favorite game that you've played this year? This year? Yeah. Oh, Spirit Fair. Spearfarer, I've yet to play that, but it looks really good. It's so good. I think I think we were talking about it at one point, like yeah. while I was playing it, and it's it's so good. Like it's it's another one of those indie games. It deals with, I mean, it's real shit. Like it it looks cute. It is cute. The art style is amazing, and then it kind of just hits you in the face, and <laughs> in the it's in the best way possible. And I don't want to I don't want to spoil it, but yeah. it's so good definitely recommend it to you to anybody listening it's uh it's good it deals with heavy topics so there is a warning on that um yeah. so i uh but. i think it's funny because most indie games they look cute they have really fun gameplay the story is amazing but then they mm -hmm. also talk about some of the heaviest fucking shit in the world dude yeah. i mean I, pain is the best like oh yeah inspiration oh yeah so I um I just played two games recently back to back and I feel really bad because I was like oh these are two indie games that are free I'm gonna play these and they're gonna be fun and I played them and both back to back dealt with like death and yeah. it was just it was a lot like I didn't realize how heavy both of them were but like they handled it in such a beautiful way and it was honestly like two of the best games that I've played um and it just it blew me yeah. away um. I highly recommend uh, I Am Dead. That's literally... I should have known. I, I should have... Oh. <laughs> I should have fucking known off the fucking title. <laughs> it's literally right there. It's right there, and I didn't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I Am Dead, and the other game was... I am clicking on the game. It is called Lost Words Beyond the Page. It was really good. Okay. Both were really, really okay. good. Um, gameplay was really simple and fun. Um, but uh, it was very heavy talk about topics yeah, that I didn't realize yeah, that. Yeah, Spirit Fair was one of the few games like I've ever played that has almost brought me to tears. Really? Like, and of course I'm on stream and I'm just like, don't please, do this, please, <laughs> not now. <laughs> yeah. No, I get you. So, yeah, that's crazy. Definitely dude. recommend. Yeah. No, I love indie games. Highly recommend any indie games to anybody. Just play indie games, please. Support small creators in every Absolutely. form, but they also care about their games and yeah. they care about you more than any other developer. Yeah. <laughs> and they put the time in. They want to make sure that it looks crisp and everything's good. And yes. like, oh, uh, like Stray. I just finished Stray. No spoilers, Stray but oh my god, it was so fucking good. Oh, it was oh. so good. It handled really well. There was a couple moments, but like, oh, yeah. I thought they the did ending. a really good job. The ending was the ending was brought me to tear. I was always like, oh, <laughs> not this. No. no, yeah, it was it was really well done. I, I was happy with it. Um, so, Andrew, um, at the end of every podcast episode with a guest, I have a little improv section um, that we do just to finish out uh, the, the episode on a laugh. We, they've been sitting here listening to us for an hour and a half chatting about random shit that is interesting to us. Um, and let, let's just end the episode on a little, little ha ha, you know? Yeah. Um, so how this works is um, I give you a prompt. You have to sell it to me as if it is the sponsor of today's episode. Um, and so since I am the host, you can give me a prompt first and I will go first and then I will give you one and you can finish it off. All right. Yeah. Okay. So what you do you, ready? what do you got for me? I have an on the go. It's a hybrid machine that works works out your your <laughs> your God. biceps and is uh, is uh is like uh antiperspirant to help like not sweat on the go but you're also getting that workout i want to hear this so it's it's like uh it's 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 attached it's, to you yeah it's simultaneous yeah it's attached it's okay. simultaneously yeah okay go for it. <laughs> beautiful yeah, yeah, yeah. all right all right so today's sponsor of of the episode thank you to um of uh, on the go um no to no to uh snow um <laughs> on the go no to snow it's a portable uh wearable uh tiny contraption you wear on your body that encapsulates you in a s 
slightly small force field. This thing will work out your body as you move and do out your daily routine while also keeping you squeaky clean. And by squeaky clean, we mean antiperspirant free or antiperspirant plus. Who fucking knows? It keeps yeah. you unsweatified. Basically, an, a portable AC unit that also works out your body. You don't want to go to the gym. No one wants to fucking go to the gym, but we all do our daily stuff. So wouldn't you want to just sit back, relax, play some video games while your biceps and your quads and your fucking glutes get fucking worked out while you're you're going? And you don't have to worry about gamer sweat either because it's, it's fucking, it's cooling you down as you go. Never get raged again. Never throw a controller. Look at you. This is the, this is the perfect gamer in a basement <laughs> fucking grabs it out there you don't have to touch grass you don't have to interact with anybody else it will work you out and also keep you keep you unsweatified it's beautiful so get your on the go uh no snow today um thanks thanks for sponsoring today's video the link's in the description it's not actually in the description and and uh <laughs> buy, buy yours now <laughs> buy yours now Whoa. Oh, that was good. On the go, no to snow. <laughs> on the go, no to snow. I guess the no to snow was like, I was trying to th think of like a, a clever play on words yeah. for like sweat. Hey, it's memorable. Snow. It, works. it works. It works. You'll remember it. <laughs> the fucking, fucking, Jesus the fucking turn where it was like, yeah, you gamer, never get that gamer sweat. Never have to touch grass. You'll be fine. You'll be working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it went from like a useful product to something to just make you lazier. <laughs> It was perfect. It was oh perfect. Oh my god! I'd buy it. I'd I, buy I it. honestly, I'd buy it too. Just to have it on and running while I'm doing stream, it would be great. Oh, um, yeah. but are you ready for yours? Oh, probably. Let's see what you All got. Right. So the sponsor I have for you for today's podcast, okay, is a new mead made with Pepno Bismol, so it helps your stomach. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, have you ever been? at a party where your stomach just starts acting a fool but you can't go to the bathroom you can't make a fool of yourself right here right now not in front of her not in front of him you can't do it not in front of them <laughs> ladies and gentlemen i have for you today drunken x this is a revolutionary product that is going to simultaneously help you be the life of the party and keep you in that circle completely gas free you will be <laughs> You'll be able to carry on that conversation, be able to woo them and win over the crowd. Everybody's going to remember that night, not as the one who fucking destroyed the toilet and clogged the whole system. You will be the one who was encapsulating and keeping the party going. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, buy your bottle today. Find your local retail store. It's everywhere. Don't worry about it drunkenx.com links in the description it's not really and <laughs> for just 1999 99 that ain't bad Save your party right that ain't bad side effects do include death, <laughs> death. <laughs> pink it. mouth the only side effect. <laughs> pink mouth oh my god i'm trying to like honestly though like it would probably let you like drink longer because it would yeah. settle your stomach from like yeah. puking. Yeah, you Dude. you would like it helps in so many different ways. Oh yeah, application is limitless eggs. until yeah. you drop. <laughs> until you drop, <laughs> you're able to drink so much more. Please drink responsibly, everybody. <laughs> Please drink responsibly. <laughs> drink oh, responsibly. My, oh my god. Uh, and safely with drunken eggs. Yes, drunken eggs. Um, Andrew. Dude, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really appreciate you. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for giving me thank your you time. Thank you so much for inviting me. This has been so, so much fun. It's been a blast, dude. I really appreciate you. Um, So this is now the time for you to plug yourself sexually, non-sexually, whatever you prefer. Um, And tell everyone where to find you, where, where, what you got going on, all that jazz. This is your yeah. time. And if you do a bad uh, job, I'll do it for you. That's the okay. threat. All right. Um, <laughs> well... <laughs> pressure's on now uh yeah no i usually stream monday through thursday uh, uh twitch.tv slash androsity one um schedules posted uh weekly in the discord in my discord uh i don't have like a direct link because it's like garbled mess yeah, yeah. um but 
Yeah, it, the schedule changes just depending on my work schedule because I yeah. am a bartender and sometimes things go a little longer than I'd like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Twitch and recently, like I said, Twitter, uh, Androsity TV on Twitter. Go follow And Twitter. hopefully I'll be more active than ever before <laughs> on social media. I'm okay. not going to make that promise because I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll do our utmost. I will do my damnedest. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, Andrew, <laughs> once again, thank you so much for being on here. Everybody, go check the description down below. Um, get all of his information. Go check him out. Please go drop him a follow. Check out the streams. Check out all his, all his social media. And uh, go hang out with him. He's a great guy. It's a great time. Great time. You like Pokemon? Fucking go, go chill. Plus, indie games. Who doesn't like indie games? Go check yeah. them out. Um, but everyone, thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, and Andrew, once again, thank you for being on. I appreciate you. And again, thank you. Uh, anytime, dude. Uh, anytime. This is a blast. Good time. Um, so everybody, stay funky. Eat your apples. Uh, I said that backwards. Holy shit. That's the first time I've oh. ever said that backwards. 40 episodes. Eat your apples and stay funky, my dudes. Thank you so much for 40 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the shit of you, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>